So, Sean, do you like cats? Oh, I yeah. Especially the big cats. You mean like tigers and panthers? That's right. Well, that's good because today we're back at the Ontario Regiment Museum to check out one of their five leopard ones. Okay, guys, this is just going to be a really quick overview video, but we're definitely going to revisit the Leopard one in the future because it's one of my favorite tanks. Right, well, it was designed as a joint effort between France, Italy, and West Germany, but the first two pulled out before it was finished and the West Germans did the rest. But on the bright side, the Leopard one is one of the best German examples of post-war engineering design. Take the hull, for example. It was designed by Porsche, and in the 1940s, I guess you could say cars weren't the only Porsche design products racing across France. And Race the Leopard did. It was designed to move fast and hit hard because heavy armor was considered outdated. So it was meant to get somewhere quickly and blow something up along the way. Yeah, and to blow stuff up, the Germans picked the best gun of the time, the Royal Ordnance Factory designed L7 105mm cannon. For the German tanks, they had Rheinmetall manufacture their cannons. The same Rheinmetall that manufactured the tank guns on the Panzer IVs and the pack anti-tank guns. So here on the side, you've got your uh, storage bins, like on any other military vehicle. But the interesting bit is down here in the road wheels. The Germans abandoned their design from the Second World War that proved to be quite overly complex, and just that was interlaced and just went with a nice evenly spaced design. Going on we get here. Under this grill is the 820 horsepower MTU designed diesel engine with 10 valves. It should be noted that MTU's other name is Maybach, the same Maybach that basically made all the engines for the German tanks in the Second World War. Okay, so now we're at the back of the tank and we've got some really German specific features here, specifically the turn signal and the brake lights, which are features you'd normally find on road legal vehicles. The reason for this is because the Bundeswehr frequently drives their military equipment down public roads to go from base to training areas or just to drive them around. Basically during the Cold War, nobody was going to complain because the Russians might be knocking on the door the next day. Moving on, we've got other common features we might find on other tanks, such as tow attachment and recovery points, uh, spare track links, and this. Now, this is a really interesting piece of equipment. You'll find this on most military vehicles of this type. It's called a gun crutch. It's used to uh, lock down the barrel while the vehicle is in transport. Okay, so we're going to climb on top of the tank now. All you have to do is use the footstep here, which is part of the rubber side skirt, and basically just climb up. So there we go, three points of contact. Easy as possible. Just let me join you up there, Johan. Uh, okay. So here we are on top of the turret. You've got all kinds of neat little bits and bobs up here. This is the commander's periscope. It gives him 360 degrees of view in rotation. He's also got all kinds of secondary periscopes around his hatch. Over here you've got the loader's hatch and he has two fixed periscopes facing forward here. Go down and have a look. Okay. Behind me are two radio masts, and to my left and right you have launchers for smoke grenades. On the back of the turret there's also a bustle rack for external storage. Now, this was a Belgian Leopard 1A1 upgraded to a 1A5. This is important because of this little box here, it was filled with all kinds of neat little toys. Right. So what this box is for is to house the instruments such as the laser rangefinder and other optical instruments that the Sabka electronic fire control system needed to calculate firing solutions for the main gun. This is important because when the Belgians bought their Leopard 1A1s from the Germans, 
they decided they didn't want the optical rangefinders and they went straight to an electronic solution instead, which is surprising considering even the Germans didn't have this stuff back then. Now, we can tell this is a cast, we can tell this is a Leopard 1A1 turret because it's a cast turret. Unlike, say, a later Leopard 1A4, the turret isn't welded and we can see this because, as I said, the big bit is cast and we've also got a cast gun mantlet here. Now on some models of the Leopard 1s, you might see some spaced armor. Unfortunately on this model, they don't have it. On the left side, you'll also note that there's a welded hole. What that hole was there for was the stereoscopic optical rangefinder that the Germans had on the early Leopard 1A1s. However, as we said, Belgians had this, so they didn't need it. They used the hole on the right side for all their e electronics and welded up the hole on the left side. Uh, that's about it for us rambling. Subscribe to us if uh, you liked our video and you want to see our follow-on videos for hopefully when we get an expert to come in and talk on this tank. And that's about it from me. Well, thanks to the Ontario Regiment Museum for having us and thanks for watching. See you next time.